I'm Logan from with the Backwoods Institute. Today's video will be talking about my tactics that I use when I'm hunting out ground blinds. I'm going to talk about turkey hunting from ground blind and also deer hunting from a ground blind. With that, let's get started. Now ground blinds are a great way to get out in the woods, get on ground level, you don't have to crawl up in a tree stand, and you can mask your movement. They're great to take a young one out hunting or anyone that's fidgety. If you just move around a little bit, that stuff will mask your movement and it'll get you right in close and personal with your game. All right, another thing they're great for is for the bow hunter on the ground. The hardest thing for a bow hunter to do is to mask the movement of his draw. Now, in a ground blind, all that's covered. If you're outside, outside of the ground blind, just posted up against a tree or something, you can wait till that deer's not looking or that turkey's not moving or it's behind a tree or something. You can get a draw, but in a blind, you can do it when it's coming up in on you full bore. It doesn't matter. You're masked through that tent blind or that natural ground blind. Now there's two different types of ground blinds and I just mentioned them, natural and man-made. Those are your tents, your pop-ups, your stuff like that. Now I put a video out here a while back, it's called Making a Natural Ground Blind, part one and part two. Look at that if you don't wanna go out and purchase a ground blind. That's a great way to set it up with the things that are in your environment, sticks, brush, everything that's already in the woods, so it's gonna blend in perfect. Now I just referenced the Make a Natural Ground Blind video. I'm gonna ref reference a couple more throughout this video to save time and because I've already covered them in videos I made in the past. So I'm just gonna reference back to them. All right, now let's talk about turkey hunting from a ground blind. Do you have to set up a ground blind in advance to harvest a turkey out of that blind? No, you do not. You can set it up right before. As long as he doesn't see you set it up, you're golden. Now, one thing that will give you away is if you're set in the sun, or if your blind's flapping around. Those two things, a turkey keys in on movement. And the reason you can set it up, you can set it up in the middle of a field, as long as you're somewhere in the shade, nothing's shining off that blind, and the, the walls ain't flapping around, the turkey will not notice that ground blind there. Because he sees in somewhat of a two-dimensional aspect. Now the way it was described to me was, if I'm looking at a picture, and I see something move on that picture, it's gonna startle me, it's gonna spook me. That's the same way a turkey looks at the world. All right, this is an example of a turkey hunting ground blind setup. It's on the edge of a field but it's got some cover behind it, but the blind is obviously out in the open. Now I selected a flat piece of ground to put it on so I'm not tipping over when I'm sitting inside the blind. Now I'm gonna go over there and elaborate on this a little more. All right, this right here is a pop-up blind, and I apologize for the wind, it's blowing pretty hard right now, but I'm gonna try to talk over it. Now if we were in a turkey hunting setup right now, this window flap right here is on the outside flapping around. That's gonna give my blind away, my position away. So what you wanna do is you wanna tuck that into the inside. Just like that. Now I'm not gonna get into brand specific. I'm just gonna show you how to set up a man-made pop-up blind. There's many different brand types off, out there. I'm not gonna say one's better than the other. They're gonna work just fine. All right, I got my tent poles up. It's still moving around a little bit, but if you look at the surrounding, the wind's blowing pretty hard. And it's not moving any more than the leaves or anything around it. So this is good for a turkey hunt setup. You just don't want these excess flaps flapping around in the wind like that. Now what do you notice about the inside of this ground blind? It's almost pitch black. So a good idea to use in a ground blind as your camouflage is wear a black jacket, a black shirt, black gloves, because that's gonna mask any movement inside there. That black is camouflage for the shadow inside that ground blind. So that's gonna let you draw back without that turkey or without that deer noticing you're in there. All right, now you all seen how to set up a turkey hunting ground blind. Decoys are a great way to bring them closer to you, especially if you're set up on the edge of a field where Tom can see them decoys from a long ways off. I made a decoy setup video in the past. You can look at it on my channel, how to use it with a ground blind or just how to use it on the ground. They both go hand in hand. All right, let's talk about deer hunting from a ground blind. Does a ground blind, when you're deer hunting, have to be set up prior to the season or prior to you hunting in that ground blind? The ideal answer and the ideal way to do it is yes. You want to set it up a couple to three weeks, even up to a month before 
deer season starts, get that ground blind in the woods so they can get used to it and calm back down into that area. All right, the biggest thing between turkey hunting ground blind setup and deer hunting ground blind setup is the deer's eyes. Now they can see, everyone thinks they're colorblind, but they're not actually colorblind. They see a different part of the color spectrum than what we humans see. They see more towards the violet side and the blue side, and they even see into ultraviolet. Now with your ground blind, a good idea to do is to spray it with a UV killer, ultraviolet light killer, or a blocker, because they'll pick it up. If there's any dye brighteners in there or anything color brighteners in there, it'll reflect, reflect that UV light. Now, another thing being said about their eyesight, turkeys, like I said, see two-dimensional, but deer, they have the same depth perception we, could, we do. They can distinguish stuff out there depth-wise, which means that they can pick out that ground blind sitting on the edge of a field. What you need to do to your ground blind is you need to brush it in. What that means is you need to pile brush around it make that outline of that, that ground blind disappear. They have those leaves, uh, the artificial leaves that you can throw over there. That's a good start, but that's not quite enough when you want to be invisible in the deer woods. And another thing you got to combat when you're deer hunting from a ground blind is scent, all right? If you keep this ground blind in your house or keep it somewhere where uh, people are frequent or smells are frequent that are not in nature, you need to treat it as if you would your clothes you're wearing to go off to go deer hunting. Now I made a video as well called cover scent and scent elimination. Two different videos, cover scent and scent elimination. And you can use them same tactics on a ground blind. Now you can't wash it in your wash machine like you could your hunting, hunting jacket or pants or whatever, but you can spray it down and use the same tactics as are in the videos. All right, let's talk about where we're gonna set up our ground blind for deer hunting. You want to set your ground blind up, obviously, where the deer are going to be. The best way to find that out is to scout. Now, if you're setting your blind up in preseason, you're not going to have very many rubs or scrapes to judge your location off of because they simply haven't been made yet. So one thing you want to look for is deer traffic, deer trails, stuff like that, food sources, water sources, things like that, where deer are going to go. Now, on the, the deer trail part, you don't just want to set up on one deer trail. You want to set up where trails converge. Or another way to look at it is a funnel. Now it might be a terrain funnel. Let's say there's a bluff right here and a water source. A deer has to go through there to get from point A to point B. A funnel may be as simple as just a piece of cover, a thicket between two woods. That if a deer is gonna go from this woods to this woods, it's not gonna walk out in the open, especially the big boy who's in that woods. He ain't gonna go out in the open. He wants to stay as covered and concealed through his movement as possible. So they're gonna funnel through that little thicket. Those are good places to set up your ground blind. All right, right behind me, I got my blind set up. I'm gonna start brushing in here soon. One thing that I do, one thing that's gonna give yourself away, give the position of the blind away into a new area is your scent, all right? So I wear latex gloves when I'm putting it in. Same thing if I'm putting down a mock scrape or a scent trail or anything. I'm going to use these because there's my human scent is on my hand. I'm also got my rubber boots on. You want to treat it as if you were going hunting when you're setting up a stand. Now with that being said, on the inside here, on the floor, I got all these leaves. So if I'm sitting in here and I'm moving around to get a shot, I'm going to be making some noise. So I want to clear all that out. Got an area cleaned off. It's nice and flat. This is where I'm going to set my blind on. So I'm just going to let it sit back down. One key thing when hunting from a ground blind or your tree stand or anything, you need to have a good avenue of approach. It needs to be clear where you can get through without touching much of the vegetation, making too much noise to give your position away. You can leave scent or you can make noise to give your position away. So you want to have a good avenue to and from your ground blind or even a tree stand in that matter. I got my blind set up right here. I'm going to stake it down and I'm going to show you what I mean by brushing it in. idea is to add some live vegetation to it now be aware that that will wilt and die but if you choose beech limbs those are those trees that are, their, their leaves stay on almost all year until they sprout new ones in the spring 
Now that's in my natural, making a natural ground blind setup, and you're kind of doing that right now. So if you want to learn more about that in detail, watch that video. All right, now this is an example of what I mean by brush it in. It almost disappears. You still have that ridge up on top, but you can put some up there if you want to. But this is what I mean by brushing it in. Now I'm gonna go give you a tour. This is around the front. From right here, this angle right here is where I expect the deer to come from. This way I can shoot from here or here. These are big zippers right here. But if they do anything sketchy, I can get them out this side or I can get them out this side. Now let's check out the back. This is my door to get in. That's where I get in. I cleared, you can't really see, but I cleared out an area free of leaves. So I'm sitting in there and moving around. I'm not making any noise. All right, now you wanna make sure your window is free of any of that brush or anything because you don't want it to deflect an arrow or get in the way of aiming your firearm. All right, there it is. Ground blind set up for deer hunting. Got my window zipped up right now. There it is down. I put that artificial leaf stuff over the top to help conceal that top better. Brushed it in. Now before you go and brush your whole ground blind in, make sure you check your local game laws because you might have to have hunter orange visible on this ground blind. So if that's the case, just make sure you abide by your local game laws. With that being said, hope you guys like this video. Catch you in a bit.